In this video, I want to look at event propagation. And that sounds really complicated. But the idea is that events that happen in JavaScript can be controlled and can be stopped. And the order uh, at which they execute, can we can control it slightly. So here's an example here that I've set up. I have an A tag which links to a big version of a star image, and then inside that A tag is a small version of the star image. And right now when I refresh and click on this image, it just goes directly to the big version. And that's because this is a link, so it's doing exactly what it does. But what I want to do is click on this and I want the big version to show up in here so instead. what I want to do in my JavaScript is I need to stop the a tag from doing what it normally does so that I can control it. So let's create a variable here called go. Well, let's call it btn. I don't like the name of this over here. I'm going to change it to btn. So then I will set this equal to dot btn. So there is reference to my a tag. So dollar sign btn dot on click like this and we'll do our function. So when we click on this, we can do console.log clicked. All right, so we have a click event on our A tag here, and I'm going to click on it. And you can, if you saw quickly there, the word clicked showed up before we went to a new page. So even though we have a click event on our A tag here, it's still doing what an A tag normally does, which is going to a new page. To prevent the so A tag have... from doing what it normally does. And we can do that by using this E variable, this argument that's passed with events, and we can type E dot prevent default. And that will stop the A tag from doing what it normally does. So now when I click on the A tag, you can see that nothing happens. So we've actually stopped the A tag doing what it does, which is linked to another page. And now we can do something with it. The, this is great because what we're doing is if this JavaScript doesn't download or if JavaScript is disabled on the device, this will still technically work. It will still go to the bigger version when JavaScript isn't working. But when it is working, we're providing a slightly better user experience. So the first thing we want to do in here is we want to create a variable that captures the big version of the stars. So in here, I'll create a variable. Let's call it big stars. And it's going to be equal to the href attribute on our a tag. So we can just type uh, dollar sign btn dot attr href. So that means get a specific attribute off that tag. And the one we want is the href attribute. So let's just do a console.log here so we can see it working. Big stars. So now when we click on the a tag, you can see it gets the href for the big stars. And we can use that now to put in here. So if we look at our HTML, I have a div here called big. And I've just given it in a height and a border so we can see where it is. So in my JavaScript, I'll create a new variable here called dollar sign big. And like it's that. equal to dollar sign. Dot. And now that I have that the href for it, I can target big and change its CSS. And let's do background image like this. And in CSS, normally when we do background image, we have to type URL and do the brackets like that. So we still have to do it even though we're writing in JavaScript. But in between here, in between the brackets, we want to combine that with another string, which is the string of big stars. So we need to use the pluses like this. So we'll combine our pluses. And then in here, we're going to type big stars. So when we click on our image here, you can see that the image gets put into the background of our div. So with prevent default, we can prevent the elements from doing what they normally do. Specifically, it works most with a tags. And then we can overwrite what they do and do something differently.